What's up everyone, how's it going? This is Waj, hope you guys are all the way. Well, now I've been testing out the new Mac Mini for a couple of weeks now, and in this world where Apple wants full dominance and control over all their products, I think perhaps the Mac Mini might be the last of its kind where Apple gives you some sort of freedom and control over your end user experience based on your personal needs and preferences. And besides the aging Mac Pro, which Apple may or may not uh, continue to support in the future, the Mac Mini could be certainly argued to be the most versatile product that Apple sells at the moment. Now, design-wise, the Mac Mini is still super compact, only measures about 19.7 centimeters square, and is only about 3.6 centimeters in terms of height, weighs about 1.3 kilograms, and even though we don't have a VESA mount connection at the back where you can mount it to a third-party monitor by itself, it's still very compact and will fit virtually on anybody's desk. Another big highlight is certainly connectivity. At the back, we have four Thunderbolt 3 connections, which has a capability to transfer USB-C data, as well as power 5K monitors up to 60 Hertz refresh rate. Beyond that, we have two USB 3.0 type A connections, a full size HDMI 2.0 port, as well as gigabit ethernet with the option to upgrade to 10 gigabit ethernet, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. The power supply is also built in, so you don't have to deal with any kind of brick on the cable itself. In terms of the internal wireless capabilities, we have Bluetooth 5.0 as well as 802.11 AC Wi-Fi. Now the best thing about the Mac Mini is its user upgradable RAM option. So we actually only got the 8 gigabyte version, but if you have a basic torque set, you can get down into the logic port. There's actually two SODIMs for DDR4 memory rated at 2666 megahertz. And this is where you can definitely save some money. I know that Apple charges $600 extra to get 32 gigabytes versus on Amazon. If you get this 32 gigabyte set from Crucial, it only costs about $257 for the same specification. Now the performance results that we're getting is pretty decent. If you take a look at our Cinebench R15 benchmark, we're getting around 1187 points there. And with Geekbench on the single core score, we're getting around 5,600 points. And on the uh, multi-core score, we're getting around 23,000. So that's definitely a decent amount of performance for uh, most people out there doing some basic video editing at 1080p, uh, some photo editing and some basic content creation. Now as a standalone PC, there's some serious hardware limitations with the integrated GPU. So I would definitely recommend for any kind of power user doing any kind of 4K editing, 3D rendering, motion graphics, things like that, you definitely want to invest in the eGPU. We have this Blackmagic eGPU that's housing a Vega 56 graphics card. Now just to demonstrate the difference between an eGPU and just the standalone Mac Mini, on Premiere Pro with editing raw uncompressed 4K files, we had an export project time under two minutes and it took about 23 minutes to complete that export file with just the CPU by itself, but with the eGPU, it got it done in less than 13 minutes. And of course, if you have a high resolution monitor and want to do any kind of high resolution gaming to get anything beyond single digits, an eGPU like what we have is also pretty much a necessity as well. Now, in terms of the thermal dynamics of the Mac Mini, we did load up the CPU for several minutes and it never went past beyond 55 degrees Celsius. The idle temps are around 33 degrees Celsius, which is fairly normal. So the integrated cooling solution is definitely doing its job and is whisper quiet as well. And thus far, I haven't encountered any major thermal concerns, which was unlike uh, the uh, current generation MacBook Pros that had that meltdown issue a couple of months back. So hopefully we won't encounter similar issues with this Mac Mini in terms of a long-term basis. Now, in terms of the internal storage capacity, we have a range from 128 gigabytes all the way up to two terabytes. Now, you want to be careful when selecting this because this is not user upgradable uh, like the RAM. So the PCIe SSD memory is built directly into the logic board. It's hardwired in. Now, like most Macs, the read and write performance of the SSD is pretty stellar. The uh, Mac boots up very, very quickly. Applications install and load up very snappy as well. So there's certainly no complaints in terms of of the actual speed of the SSD, which is pretty unsurprising. Now, at the end of the day, if you were to ask me who the Mac Mini is particularly geared for, well, that person would definitely have to like Mac OS X, otherwise they would build themselves a custom PC. 
Secondly, they would want some sort of control over their end user experience. And thirdly, they don't want to shill out a whole bunch of cash for an iMac or an iMac Pro. Now, in terms of the regular iMac itself, funny enough, if you take a look at the configuration that's currently available, the six core version of the Mac mini in a lot of cases will outperform the older generation Core i5s and Core i7s that are available in the 5K or 4K regular iMacs, which is definitely interesting. And if you couple uh, the six core Mac mini with a 4k monitor which typically you can get for 250 to 300 dollars a decent mouse and keyboard combination you're probably going to be under 1500 dollars for that kind of setup which is certainly more competitively priced than any kind of iMac that you're going to get from a comparative standpoint additionally the setup that I have behind me with the BenQ monitor the eGPU and the peripherals is under $3,500, which performance wise is very comparable to the $5,000 iMac Pro that we compared a couple of months back and uh, certainly gives you a lot more versatility and options. And you can build a setup like this that has comparable performance if you do choose to get other parts that are on sale. But besides uh, those things, guys, that's really it. As we mentioned before, the versatility factor that you're getting on the Mac may be a very rare occasion going forward. Apple is going going to be more and more a closed ecosystem and you're going to have less overall controls over what you're going to do uh, certainly from a desktop platform let alone any of their uh, mobile uh, systems that they have out there whether that be iPhone or iPad so if you're still in the game for a desktop based system want to get OS 10 specific with native Apple related hardware that will work with their software optimally uh, this is probably the best thing that you're going to get at uh, the most competitive price range as well but love to hear your thoughts now we're going to do a uh, hackintosh comparison between this so if let's say if you want to build so an unauthorized uh, pc that is comparable in terms of specifications to what we have back there we're going to have that video coming up very very soon other than that thanks again for your watching thanks for your support make sure you have the notification bell turned on so you get our videos once we upload them that would be really awesome and we'll see you really soon take care